It's late at night at the Red Dragon Inn. The wench calls for last orders as many of the guests start heading up to their rooms or out into the streets. In a small office upstairs, Warthon Redbeard, the dwarven proprietor, gets an early start on counting the day's take, admiring the glint of gold in the candlelight. Your band of famed adventurers remains at your table, as you often do at this time of night. Some of you are slumped over in your chairs, sent temporarily to oblivion by one too many drinks or dances with Gog. Others, like Wrench and Wizgilly, who burned through their small stashes of coins hour ago, are paying off their tabs by bringing bottles of wine and ale up from the cellar. Fiona, Zot, and Gurky are all still awake, more or less, playing what looks to be the final round of gambling of the night. You can't win, you know, says Gurky, plucking a gold piece off of his mountainous hoard and throwing it into an ante. I raise. Pookie sticks his head out of Zot's sleeve and favors Gurky with an angry expression as the wizard scans his cards. Gurky grins back, trying not to break into a sweat as the tips of the rabbit's innumerable teeth poke out past his fuzzy lips. Well, says Zot, it seems like the only thing I can do is... Then he points dramatically over Gurky's shoulder. What's going on over... Nothing's going on over there, says Gurky, leaning back into his chair. I'm not falling for it. And yet, despite not falling for it, Gurky does hear the pitter-patter of both booted and bare feet running up from behind. Since he knows better than to let random people walk or run up behind him, Gurky turns around just as Wizgilly and Wrench race breathlessly up to the table. By the time he turns back around, Fiona has leaned across the table and taken a peek at the five dragon cards in his hand. Seriously, Gurky? She says, raising an eyebrow. There's three dragons to a deck. It's like you're not even trying anymore. Well, says Gurky, I actually am playing the little known rule variant where Rent slams down his toolbox in the middle of the game, scattering the ante. We need help, he says, luminous eyes darting. We were trying to help Warthone out, but I think we made a, a, a mistake. What? says Fiona. You break some bottles or something? Yes, says Wrench, but shaking his head. But that's not the biggest problem. What he's trying to say, interrupts Wizgilly, is that something's wrong with our new danger room. You feel the entire inn shudder, as if struck by a catapult stone and a giant gout of black smoke erupts from the cellar entrance. Glasses shimmy off the tables and shatter on the flagstones. The wench, annoyed but graceful, negotiates the minor quake without spilling a drop from her fully laden tray. What the heck was that? shouts Fiona. And what the heck is a danger room. Well, we were working down in the cellar, yeah, says Wrench, trying to build this artificed thing with combat constructs and wingalingers and splin blades and stuff so that novice adventurers could face off against them and hone their fighting skills. We thought it'd be a good way to attract the type of clientele that Warthone is always looking for, adds Wizgale. Mostly the reason we've been on bottle duty these past couple of months is so we have better access to the cellar so we can finish it and surprise him. Another tremor rocks the inn, a strange rhythmic chiming sound begins to issue from the cellar. You know, says Gurky, I'm pretty sure he's gonna be surprised. Yeah, I know. Wrench looks over his shoulder. We were almost finished, but there was a short in the system, and now the danger room is powering and we can't turn it off. Zot purses his lips. How long do we have until it's fully powered up? Something in the basement falls over, crashes, and explodes. Amidst the din, you hear the unmistakable sounds of unseen constructs whirring to life. Wizgalley looks down at the floor. According to my calculations about, uh, ten seconds ago? Pookie is already across the room and down the cellar stairs in a flash. Zot stands up, arcane power flowing from his hands. Make sure whatever's down there doesn't come up here. We'll try to get the rest of them sober, or at least awake. We'll be right behind you. Hello everyone and welcome to Meet Me at the Table. This is Colin and today we are going to start a playthrough of Tales from the Red Dragon Inn. This is a one to four player cooperative adventure experience by Slugfest Games. You might know uh, Red Dragon Inn as a competitive game. Well, they came out with this one, which is an adventure game and it's cooperative and so much fun. My kids love it. We are actually on scenario 11, so that's chapter three and our kids are having a blast. I think this works great for adults and for kids, so I kind of wanted to show it on this channel, and if you have a chance of picking this one up, you can. I do want to mention, make sure to turn on those Klingon subtitles. They'll be popping up right here. In case I make any errors and miss them in editing, you'll see them pop up there, so make sure to have those on. What I'm hoping to do today is scenarios one and two. We're going to be playing with Gog and Zot, my two favorite characters, but really, I like all six characters that come in the game, and I do hope 
that I can show all of them through a couple different scenarios as we play. But I thought since these are my two favorite, these are the two we're going to start off with. I've already pre-set up for our first scenario. I read you the flavor text already. Let's go and check out how we set up our two heroes. I'll talk a bit about the map and then we'll start our playthrough. Here we have our two characters set up, Zot and Gog. Let's take a look at each one of them. Here we have Zot's character board. On this board, we have our three basic actions. Think of them as cantrips, so to speak, so you can use them every turn multiple times. They don't have any cooldown cost, okay? So we can do an, a range attack of three with an arcane bolt, rolling one yellow die, targeting one foe. We can move ourselves three spaces and we can teleport, which means we can just leap. We don't have to worry about difficult terrain or traps. Uh, and then this third one, we can meditate. We can invigorate two. That just means remove two cooldown tokens on our power cards. As you may have heard during the prologue reading, Zot has a friend, Pookie, the rabbit, <laughs> that's with him. And so he actually starts on the board. He's a small miniature that's avoided, heroic, and tiny. So heroic means it's on our side. Avoided and tiny means it can share the same space and enemies completely ignore it. So you can see Pookie has no health. Pookie can never take damage. We will be rolling this die at the beginning of each round, and this will denote what Pookie will do. We get to decide when to activate it during Zot's turn, but the actions that are available to us will only be one of these three. I do want to mention, Zot has eight health. If ever he loses all eight health, we flip him over to his wounded side, and he actually has different actions. So the arcane bolt's the same, but now he limps along so he doesn't leap, and he now has a shenanigan called Invigorate 1. And shenanigans are important because usually on your turn, you get two actions plus one shenanigan that you can activate. So if I was on this side, I could do these two actions and a shenanigan. Or I could do this action twice and a shenanigan. So that is just showing how it's a little bit different after you've taken some damage. If ever you take all of the damage on the opposite side of your player board a second time, that eight damage, then we lose the scenario. We start with two power cards. This is our lightning card, and it says, of course, lightning arcs around corners and our duplicated force bolt. These ones have cooldown numbers. What that means is after we use that, we'll place that many cooldown tokens on there, and each round we can remove them, or using the invigorate action, we can remove them during our turn, and that means we can't use them until they totally cool down, then we can use them again. So this is a range 5 attack. It does one auto damage plus a yellow die, and this game's dice are awesome. The dice never miss. Those are hits. That symbol is an inspire symbol. As long as you roll more inspire symbols than there are epic dice in the epic pool, and I'll show you that in a second, uh, you can actually generate another epic die that then other characters or yourself can use on future activations. You have the exploding burst, you have just single hits, and then there's, there's one side that has the double hits. So that's the yellow die. Over here, this is a range four attack, and it actually can attack two foes with only one yellow die. If you deal damage, you can do the harm effect. You may push two of the targets. Finally, because Zot apparently was in his wizard bathrobe when he was uh, gambling with uh, Gurky, uh, this is our only item we have. This literally does nothing except for gives us a shield. That can block up to two points of damage. Here we have Gog. Gog has Gog smash, Gog take big steps, and Gog keep going. So you can see he starts with a shenanigan on this side. He has 10 total health. This burst attack, he can actually attack one auto hit plus rolling the yellow die, and he hits two uh, hexes straight in front of him. This one lets him move four, and normally you cannot move through foes, but he can. He can move right through them. And then his shenanigan is invigorating one, helping him cool down quicker. His two power cards are Gog Still Reach You. This is a range two. He can grab a figure, which means within range two, he can grab any figure, and he can put it then adjacent to him anywhere, maybe on a trap, <laughs> which is so cool. And then he can melee attack with two yellow dice. This one, he can just melee attack with two yellow dice on one foe, and then he may push two the target, then he may move to, so he can shove that enemy and then move towards that enemy again. All Gog has for a weapon is a bar stool, and that gives him one power token. What we can use that power token for is after we roll dice, we can determine if we want to increase the damage of that entire attack. And if it's hitting multiple enemies, it would increase that damage of all the attacks against those enemies by one for every one of those that we spent. 
Here we have our epic pool dice. Now, these will be black. The black ones are awesome. Look, they can deal three damage. They also have bursts. Oh, so good. You can use them for two different things. A heroic figure begins an attack. You can remove any number of dice from the epic pool and add them to your attack roll. Attacks without attack dice roll only add uh, epic dice. You may not add dice to the epic pool with an empowered attack. So if we empower an attack and we roll these inspire symbols, so let's say I rolled this, I can't then add one epic die to this pool because I'm rolling this black die with it. You'll see how that works when we play. We also can, heroic, a heroic figure is being attacked. You can remove one of those black dice to prevent up to two damage that you are suffering. That can be helpful if you're about to die. <laughs> now, I'm just going to recommend if you're playing this and you are a gamer, I really recommend playing on legendary mode. The first scenario doesn't have specific rules for legendary mode, but I'm still going to play it with the legendary die just because it's called the doom die because I think it's more fun. Whenever you roll dice, if you don't roll dice, you don't have to roll this. But whenever you roll dice, you have to roll this red die. And if you get the doom symbol, you either have to take one unblockable damage or you have to remove one yellow die from your pool. Okay, But half of the sides are blank. So half the time you'll miss, half the times you get hit. Also, when you move into later scenarios, the legendary difficulty will have a little bit more spawns or maybe there's less health or I should say more health for a boss or less time to do something. So in general, if you're playing with gamers, I highly recommend playing on legendary mode. With my kids, though, I'm playing on standard and it's great. This game does use a variable initiative uh, activation for both us and enemies. And so when you're playing with two characters, you will place both your main activation token, which when you draw that, you get to do two actions and a shenanigan. And you have a secondary activation token. This one, you can either do one action or one shenanigan. Okay, uh, so I'm going to place all four of these into my bag for initiative draws. In this first room, the gauntlet, we have two enemies on the board. Those are Gizmoblins. So let's take a look at how you know how much health they have and how they activate. On the map itself, it will show the different enemies that you will be facing. You'll also see in the rule book itself how many of them you should have prepared. So I have five Gizmoblins prepared just in case I need them. But what's really cool about this game is I could use this standee for another scenario and these Gizmoblins will activate completely completely differently. So how these work, at the beginning of each round we'll roll one of these dice, depending upon what symbol we roll, we'll place the die there and when we draw their initiative token, so you know how I put our initiative tokens in the bag, I'm going to also place a single blue one into that bag. So right now we've got a lot more activations than they do, but we are in scenario one. Uh, this is what it will do to activate. Move two towards a foe, do a melee attack of one damage. If they harm us, it'll also push the target one space. Uh, this one, it'll move two towards a foe, and then it has a range four attack, dealing one damage to one foe. If the Gizmoblin successfully deals damage to its foe, it will then cause the harm effect. Put a two damage trap in an unoccupied space nearest to the target. We've completed our setup to start our first scenario. This shows us how to play around. And what's also cool about this is this is on the map itself. So each scenario, there might be unique things you need to look for. They have them here. The only thing that I've heard and I agree with, sometimes scenarios have specific actions you can take. It'd be great if they had those on the map as well because those are easy to forget because they're only in the rule book itself. So let's just start. We'll start by doing a ready phase. In, uh, we'll, we will invigorate all abilities. That means remove one cooldown token. We can ignore that. Now we need to roll the scheme dice. So we have two dice we need to roll. One is for the Gizmoblin and one is for Pookie. We'll roll up our two dice and we have the bunny ears <laughs> and the uh, ghost face. After rolling the scheme dice, we fill our initiative bag. We have all the tokens we need for now. And then during the combat phase, we'll draw and resolve initiative tokens. So our first one is Gog. So Gog can do either one action or he can do one shenanigan. That's because this is his partial token. Gog is certainly too far away to do anything super useful. So he's going to take the Gog take big steps action. I do want to mention the game comes with gray uh, miniatures, so they do not come painted. I did paint these because my kids love this game. Here we have Gog. Gog is ready to take you down. I really like him. He looks awesome. 
Let's talk quick about the board itself. So you can see here we have different hexes. This is a purple impassable space. Think of that like a pillar, so we can't even leap through it. We can't walk through it. These yellow spaces are difficult terrain, so it takes you two movement to move into it. That also includes uh, for the enemies themselves. So God can move four, one, two, three, four. That's, I think, where he's going to go. Or he could move one, two, three, four, getting himself a little bit closer. Actually, that's a much better idea because if he does activate again, he can grab this Gizmoblin, drop him in a trap. Speaking of which, let's grab our next initiative token. And we have Gog. Gog now gets two actions and a shenanigan. His first action will be Gog still reach you. He's going to place three cooldown tokens on this to do this action. Range to grab a figure. So that means he can grab it place it anywhere that's adjacent to him, and then he can attack one foe. It wouldn't have to be that foe that he grabbed, but it will be, uh, and use two yellow dice to attack that single foe. This poor Gizmoblin will be grabbed, dropped into this trap, so that will be uh, two damage to it. They only have five health, and then he's going to attack with two yellows, which is a guaranteed two damage. We'll see how much more we can do. Don't forget, because I'm playing on that legendary mode, I'll also roll the Doom die. So I'll roll all three. Well, it'd be great if I kept that yellow in here. Okay, so we're dealing two more damage, and we have one Inspire symbol. Because I have no black dice in the Epic Pool, I have more of those Inspire symbols than I have uh, Epic dice in the Epic Pool. So I'm going to grab one black die and put it in that pool. And then on a future uh, activation, either ours or Zot's, Someone can use that and roll it in. Now, with this die, I have to decide if I want to cancel one of these dice. I definitely don't. I think I'm just going to take the one damage. We have 10 health, so we'll take the damage, no problem. The game comes with these nice trackers for the enemies. We can see that was a Gizmoblin, which has a blue base. So that's why I'm using a blue card, and it's number one. So we'll place four damage here. One away. That's okay. That was still only action one. We have another action and a shenanigan. Let's do our shenanigan next, and we can do an invigorate one, so we can remove one of the cooldown tokens on Gog Still Reach You. That means Gog Still Reach You will now refresh within two turns instead of three. And then our third action, let's just do our burst attack, rolling one yellow, which is going to guarantee kill him. Actually, the one auto damage will guarantee kill him. And even if I roll this yellow, it doesn't matter what I roll, I'm never going to get more than one of those inspired symbols. So I'm not even going to roll. I'm just going to say I took them out <laughs> because if I could get more Inspire token uh, symbols, I might want to roll them and then potentially generate another epic die. But if I'm rolling one of these dice, I'm only ever going to get one of those Inspire symbols. And there's already one die in the epic pool and you have to roll more of those symbols than you have epic dice. So we're just going to take them out for that second action. That poor Gizmoblin didn't know what hit him. <laughs> that was our full activation for Gog. So Gog is done now until the next time we go through the initiative bag. Uh, next to go is Zot. Now this is Zot's partial turn. Pookie does not activate during Zot's partial turn. That's important to know. You might think I get to decide when. No, it has to be on Zot's regular activation that Pookie activates. Zot is simply going to teleport three, one, two, three. Now, the teleport is important because it says leap for his ability. That means he could have, if he wanted, from here go one, two, three. Even though that's difficult terrain, you can ignore it when you're leaping. If I moved into there, it costs two. But I don't need to go onto there. I'm going to go here, and that's all I'm going to do for that activation. All right, we're going to grab. There's only two tokens left. Uh, the next one is Zot. Okay, the Gizmoblins aren't going to activate. Right now, Zot has no shenanigans, so he's just going to take two actions. And I think we're just going to do this Arcane Bolt twice. Our first time, though, we are going to add the Black Die, because then I'm hoping maybe we can take out that Gizmoblin. We're rolling one Black, one Yellow, and, of course, the Doom Die. So we'll roll them up. Ooh, I have a burst on the black. So we'll grab the black die, roll it again. We have one, two, three, four, and that burst is a five. I do need to mention, this doom die will never cancel epic dice. It'll only cancel yellow dice. And I should have decided before rolling that in how I was going to handle that, losing the yellow die or taking the damage. But in this scenario, I'm always taking the damage. <laughs> I'll take the damage. One, two, three, four, five. That's enough to kill that Gizmoblin. And I'm realizing I didn't even tell you how we get to the next room. Well, we get to the next room by destroying the two Gizmoblins. Warthorn is not going to be a fan of the creative reorganization of all his kegs and barrels of ale, but a far more pressing concern is the iron rods that the Gizmoblins are launching at you. 
you can see now I've removed the three doors and the blue spaces and I've deployed additional gizmoblins. We have ones at B, D, F, and G. So you can see there's four more gizmoblins out in this area, as well as three traps in A, C, and E. And you can see those uh, traps here, here, and here. Now, it is still Zot's turn. He has one more action, and unfortunately, he does not have a shenanigan available to him. We'll have him teleport one, two, three over here. Now, something I didn't mention specifically, when you're doing range attacks, line of sight in this game is totally open, which means nothing blocks line of sight. You can count around corners, you can count through enemies, you can count through heroes, it doesn't matter. So that's why I could attack range three, one, two, three, right over that trap. The one space you cannot draw your line of sight or line of fire through are these purple spaces. So if there was an enemy here, I would need to have one, two, three range to get there. I couldn't do it within range two. Pookie is now going to activate. He will leap three and then place Zot on or adjacent to Pookie. And then Zot may invigorate one. Well, the invigoration doesn't help. And unfortunately, because he's only moving three, it's going to pull Zot farther back. But that's okay. We want Gog in the front anyways. Pookie will move three, one, two, three. Now I do want to mention Pookie can be in the same space as heroes and even enemies because he's tiny. But right now he's just going to be there and we'll place Zot in this spot. Okay, that'll end Zot's activation. We know who's next is the Gizmoblins. Because we're so far away, all the Gizmoblins are just going to do the move too. They will not be able to melee attack us. So they're always going to try and move in a safe path if possible. If there's no safe path, then they'll take damage. Well, there's safe passes through here. You start with one. It's kind of like Gloomhaven. He's going to move two towards us. This one is going to move to one, two, because there's a safe pass. Here's three. They can move one, but they can't move two, getting closer to us because those barrels cost two movement to move through. And then this Gizmoblin will move here for the two movement. That's it. Nice and easy. We've all done our activations. We check if we've won. We definitely haven't. So then we'll move to the Invigorate abilities and then roll our scheme dice. The only ability we used is Gog Still Reach You, so we'll just remove one of those cooldown tokens. Now we'll roll Pookie's die and a purple die. Rolling these two up. Okay, they're going to do the same activation as they were doing before, moving two towards a foe and then dealing a melee damage if they can. Pookie is going to do Pookie's in a foul mood. I've filled up our initiative tokens. Let's draw our first one. Oh, we have the blue one. The Gizmoblins will activate first. We'll start with number one, he can move two. That's it. Number two here can move either one, two and step in a trap, or he can move two this way, trying to get closer to us. <laughs> this uh, difficult train is certainly making it difficult for them to do anything. Two here, he can move one, and then that's it. He's not going to move two over to here. And I will say this is a paper mat. And you can see this is a little bit annoying. I actually have, and I'll put in the description below where I got it, a plastic sheet that I put over this. And it makes it beautifully flat. It is incredibly reflective though, so I'm not using it. Uh, but I highly recommend getting it. It was literally, I think, $5. It was so cheap. You are supposed to put it on tables. But instead, I'm using it for this mat. I hear that war gamers do that a lot too. And it's so nice. I wish I could show you, but it's just too reflective. Anyways, uh, that's their activation. Now we're going to have some fun. <laughs> if we can get there, that's the thing. We're so far away from, from them. Uh, next to go will be Gog. It'll be his single action. You know what we're gonna, going to do. We're going to run. Gog is way over here. One, two, three, four. We are adjacent, which is nice. That was our partial turn. We'll draw our next token, and we have Gog's regular activation. Gosh, I'm doing this in the same order. So he can do two actions and one shenanigan. Let's do out of Gog's way. This is awesome. Melee attack of two yellow dice on one foe. As long as we deal damage, which we should be able to, we can push to the target, then we can move to. Two yellow and a red. We'll roll them up. I seem to roll that doom die all the time. We'll take another damage. So that'll be our second damage. But we just dealt three damage to number three. Pushing is just like Gloomhaven. Every time you push a character, they have to be moving one hex away from you. I can't push him this way because he's still only one hex away from me. I could push him this way. And then I could push him that way because he's going farther and farther away from us. However, that's two movements so we'd end there. What I'm actually going to do is push him to here, and then we can move to, I'm going to move here. And that's because I want to do my burst, and I can hit both of these two. 
Our burst is one yellow die plus one auto damage. We'll roll these up and ooh, first we are going to grab the epic die for sure. We're going to take our third damage because I just seem to roll that doom symbol every time. But this will mean we'll deal two damage to both three and one. That means three is going to be destroyed and one will have uh, two damage on it. We can remove that number three standee and number one has two damage here. Now we will draw from our initiative bag and we will see Zot will do his partial turn. We'll just teleport three spaces, one, two, three. <laughs> and then you know what we're going to do with our final draw. We have our main activation. We'll start Zot's full activation by activating Pookie. We can activate Pookie before our activation, after our first action or shenanigan, anytime during our turn. Uh, we're going to do the leap two, and then he's going to be just slightly out of range to be able to pull any foes, uh, which is a bummer. He definitely won't be able to melee attack anything. I should also call there's no friendly fire in this game, at least up to this point of where I've gotten to. Pookie can leap one, two, and that's about it. I am realizing that Pookie does have range four, one, two, three, four to that Gizmoblin. If I could just push him over to here and deal him two damage, that would be great, but I can't. I have to pull him, so once again, he has to always be moving one hex closer to Pookie. That could get him to here. I don't really want that. Instead, Zot is going to use his first activation to just move here with his teleportation and then he's going to use one of his fun powers let's use our lightning attack now it's going to have five cooldown tokens so it's going to take a bit to come back this will do one yellow die plus one auto hit on one foe but this attack may also target each foe you draw your line of fire through so we're definitely going to add the epic die this is where bouncing around corners is awesome. Range five, one, two, three, four, five. So we're going to attack this one, but that means we can attack all three with a yellow and a black die. We'll roll up our dice. My goodness, I'm just going to draw a uh, roll this every single time. That will give him another point of damage. I think that's two. Once so we've resolved this, we have a burst on our yellow. So we're definitely going to keep going on that. Oh my gosh, another burst. One, two, three, four. If I, well, I'm guaranteed to get a hit here. Five. So you can see I have an inspire symbol. I ignore that because I rolled this die in here. But I'm dealing five damage to all three of them. They all only have five health. I just killed all those Gizmoblins with that one lightning attack. How amazing is that? That's worth the one damage I took. I will fully admit I was not planning on that. Boy, that was nice, and that's going to trigger the next room. In the far corner of the room, you spy an arcano mechanical object buzzing away and throwing off arcs of electricity. Looks like you've finally found the off switch. We've removed the doors. We've spawned two Gizmoblins. We now have a Robo Org, and we have a Sparkling Engine plus two traps. Our goal now, we win either when the Sparkling Engine has been defeated or if the Robo Org and all Gizmoblins have been defeated. The Robo Org has 15 health. Let's roll this die to see how he's going to activate. He will do a melee attack and haunt. Actually, that's great because you know what? His token is going to have to go into the bag, but he's not going to move with that activation. So we will just set that aside and we'll use that again next round. The sparkling engine, though, will activate. And it says here, heal to the nearest damaged friend. Well, none of the friends are damaged, so we don't have to worry about that. But it does do a range attack, uh, infinite range. It will deal one damage to one foe. It's always the closer one. We're literally the same amount of hexes away. I'm going to have it hit Zot because Gog has been hit the most. So that will be the third point of damage to Zot. <laughs> That will end this round. We'll start the next round by invigorating all of our abilities, removing one cooldown token from all of our cards. So we have four left here. Gog still reach is available out of Gog's way, still has two on it. We then need to roll our scheme dice as well as Pookie's die. Oh, good. That gives him a movement of five. He's going to need that. We don't have to roll for the sparkling engine. The Robo Org, oh, he's going to start moving. And then for the Gizmoblin, we'll roll this up. It looks like they're doing air dispensing non-lethal trap. <laughs> I now have all the initiative tokens in our bag. We know what we need to do. We'll draw red. Okay, so the Robo Org is going to go first. He's simply going to move three towards the closest foe. He's not going to step on this trap if he doesn't have to, so he'll move two plus one. That's three. That's it. He has a melee attack, but no one is within range, so that's it. So next... We'll draw our next initiative token. I like when they're nice and quick. 
and we have oh, Gog's partial activation. Gog will simply rush forward one, two, three, four, and that's all he's going to do. Okay, let's grab our next initiative token, and this one is Zot's full activation. Pookie is on a rampage. Let's start with that. He's going to leap five. Each foe Pookie leaps over or lands on takes one damage. Uh, he's not going to land on any, but that's going to get him into the fray. Moving five, one, two, three, four, five. He can jump to here. Remember, he can jump over the traps. He doesn't have to worry about difficult terrain because it's all leaping. Zot will then use his movement. He can uh, teleport for three, one, two, three, getting into uh, Pookie's space. And you know what? I think I'm going to be smart. I'm going to say that I leaped to here. One, two, three. I can do that because I've got a push effect I'm going to do. We're going to use Duplicated Force Bolt. That will spend four cooldown tokens, so it's going to take a while to come back. Range four, attack only one yellow die, but I can hit two foes. The big thing is, is as long as I deal damage, I can push two of the targets. Range four, we have this Robo Org here and Gizmoblin here. Let's hit both of those. Maybe I cannot roll the Doom symbol. No, I definitely rolled the Doom symbol. And only one hit, I'm still going to do it. I'm going to take a fourth damage. <laughs> because of that doom die uh but i'm going to deal one damage to each of them now that may not seem great but i'm totally okay with that because guess what i'm going to push two one two he's moving two spaces farther away from zot that means he actually takes four more damage so he just took five out of the 15 damage that we need to have him take i love it the Gizmoblin will just run into the wall. They don't take any damage for running into a wall until Gog gets some of his upgraded cards. Then he throws enemies against walls. It's so good. Okay, that was our two activations because we teleported and we uh, did the attack. So we're done. Next to go, let's see. It's going to be Gog's regular activation. He is most certainly going to run up one, two, three, four, right up to this Robo Org. And then I think he's just going to do his burst attack. You know what? At this point, there's no more traps in this room, so let's just do Gog still reach you. He is going to grab the Robo Org, and I think we'll move him, uh, but he'll still have to be adjacent because that's how grab works. You can move them anywhere adjacent to you, and then he can attack him with two yellow dice instead of one. I don't want the Robo Org to heal, so I'm actually going to place him on this side of Gog. Gog is then going to turn and roll two yellow dice and that Doom die. We're hoping for tons of hits here. Oh, finally, nothing on the Doom die. We do have an Inspire symbol, so that will give us one of the black dice into the Epic Pool. We're dealing three damage. I might as well use this power token, adding plus one. That's four more damage to the Robo Org. That means he's down to nine damage, only six health. For our shenanigan, we will invigorate one. That way, out of Gog Way will be available to us next turn. Let's now draw our next token, and we have blue, so the Gizmoblins are activating. They're going to move two towards the closest foe, then with a range four attack for one damage. If they deal a harm, they're going to place a two damage trap. The number one Gizmoblin will be able to move two here. It will attack Gog for one. I have no shields, so he will take another point of damage. And then we'll drop a trap here and put two damage tokens there, which is a bit risky because we may get pushed into that. This Gizmoblin will also move two. It will deal one damage to Gog. Gog has taken five damage. He's at half health, and another trap is going to be placed here. Hopefully, we'll be able to push some of these enemies into these traps. We'll now grab our next initiative token. Oh, and Zot is going to take his partial turn. All that Zot can really do is his basic attack. He can do it at range three, one, two, three. So he is going to hit the Robo Org for one yellow die. We'll roll them up. Oh, nice. No Doom die and two more damage. That's 11 out of the 15. The last enemy to activate will then certainly be the Sparkling Engine. He is first going to heal one of his damaged friends, the closest one, by two. If we look here, one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four, they're both the same distance apart, so then we get to choose. He's going to heal this Gizmoblin, so it has no damage on it now, but that means we should be able to take out that Robo Org. Also, though, one enemy, the closest one in range, which is Gog, will take one damage. That's his sixth damage. That will end the round. We'll start the next round by doing our invigoration, removing one of the cooldown tokens on each of these. That means out of Gog way is available to us again. That means we can push, which is awesome. We can hopefully push some people into these traps. 
Uh, I'm not sure that's going to work. We're not in the right spots for that. We'll roll our die for Pookie. Okay, he's got some leaping. The Gizmoblins will go ahead and do the moving to dealing the damage. And we have for the Robo Org. Ooh, he's going to do the melee attack. Three damage to two foes. <gasps> ooh, that could almost uh, make Gog be on his wounded side. That's still cool. Uh, we do have the Sparking Engine is just ready. We'll then start that combat phase, drawing our first initiative token. We have a yellow token. You know what that means? This Robo Org is going to heal by two, and Gog is going to take his seventh damage. Ouch. Okay, that was all the Sparking Engine does. <laughs> Next to go is Zot's main activation. We're going to start with Pookie. We are going to leap three with Pookie summon Zot, and then we may have Zot be in the same spot or an adjacent, and he can invigorate one. We'll invigorate by removing one of these on our duplicated force bolt. Pookie will jump from behind Zot, one, two, and then we'll have Zot up here right here, and he then will use his meditate action to remove two of these with an invigorate, and then his second action, duplicate force bolt again, with four time uh, cooldown needed to be placed there, but we can attack two foes. We are definitely going to use the black die and the yellow die, plus, of course, that red doom die, wherever it is. Range four from Zot, we can hit both of these, and as long as we deal a damage, we can push both of them into those traps. That's why that felt like it was an awesome idea. We'll give our dice a roll four damage. That is amazing. Four damage on this Gizmoblin, pushing it back to here, boom, done. That's going to deal six damage. It only had five health, it's out. We have nine damage on the Robo Org. Four more puts us to 13, and then pushing him one into this trap is 15, and the Robo Org is gone. Oh my gosh, there's only one Gizmoblin left. We just have to take that one out and we win this scenario. You can see why I like Zot so much, right? <laughs> Next to go is Gog. He can only do one action. Such a bummer we can't grab, so we're just going to move one, two, three, getting right in front of this Gizmoblin. Hopefully when we draw our regular activation, we can just take him out. Uh, oh, Zot has his one partial action. Looking here, we are within range three, so let's just take a pot shot. One yellow die. Okay, we'll do, we'll do the two damage and we'll take one, or we could deal no damage. Now, I'm going to take the damage for that. Two damage, though, to that Gizmoblin. It only has three health left. Next to go will be blue. The Gizmoblin won't even move because he is adjacent to Gog. He will attack, dealing the seventh damage to Gog, and then push Gog one space. This will mean Gog is no longer adjacent to him, which is super annoying. We'll have to spend an action getting closer to him. You'll see soon he'll get a power where he can leap and attack. That's what he needs. I think the only one left is Gog because the final one is red and we've taken out the Robo Org, so I'm just going to set that aside. So that means Gog has two actions and a shenanigan. Well, we know what we're going to do for the shenanigan. We'll remove one of these cooldown markers on Gog Richu. Oh, too bad we didn't have that. That would have been so nice. But I think for our action, we'll just simply move and then attack. We'll move up one right to here. We're doing one auto damage with the attack. Uh, that means we'll deal three damage, and that's enough to take out the Gizmoblin. Yes! So we don't have to take out the Sparking Engine, because we took out the Gizmoblins and the Robo Orc. The last of the strange machines explode in a shower of sparks, gears, and noxious black smoke. All around the hidden room inside the Red Dragons in basement, the few constructs that are still functional lurch to a stop or topple face first into the ale soaked floor. A lone Gizmoblin bravely tries to continue the fight, crawling towards you with one of its remaining arms. Danger Room Program Error 404, it says, in an electronic voice that becomes gradually slower and quieter. Battle not found. Then the Gizmoblin's servos seize and its red eyes go dark. You survey the room, several barrels broached in the battle continue to disgorge their contents all over the floor. The basement's wooden support columns bear the scars, arrows, scorch marks, and acid etching of the recent pitched battle. Other than that, and the small fortune in artificed machinery that has just fallen beneath your mighty blows, the damage is minimal. 
In the relative quiet following the battle, Pookie splashes across the floor and runs up Zot's robe to sit around the wizard's shoulder, leaving ale-stained rabbit prints on Zot's velvety finery. Fiona, apparently because the battle hasn't been finished to her satisfaction, wanders around kicking the constructs in the face. This is going to set us back months, says Wizgelly, wrinkling her nose. It's our fault, though. We should have told you to fight the constructs with padded weapons. Oh, says Fiona, I guess that makes sense, but it's not nearly as much fun. <laughs> Amidst all this, you hear a strange bubbling, fizzing sound coming from the back of the room, splashing through the ale puddles you resolve to investigate. What in the gold darn heck is going on down here? says Warthon, as he comes clomping down the stairs, the puffball on the tip of his nightcap bouncing against a face that is currently as red as his hair. The whiskers of his normally well-maintained beard bristle wildly in every direction. I thought you were running bottles and keeping kegs upstairs, not turning the cellar into a mechanical death trap. Look at all this damage here. You've destroyed all my stock. Not all the stock, says Gurky, gesturing theatrically with his daggers at the significant number of lightly damaged barrels. I'd say less than, what do you think, Zot? 15%? Zot merely wrings out the hem of his robe and grumbles. What is all of this even for, anyhow? People come here to drink and unwind, not to get attacked by out-of-control whirligigs and foolery. We just wanted to make you a training room to attract more guests, says Wrench, nervously wringing the neck of his spanner. It was supposed to be a surprise, so, well, uh, surprise? That's right, says Wizgel. Even though we caused some damage, I'd say this was a pretty good alpha test for the equipment. Once we make some modifications and track down that short in the wire, we can have it all ready to go. Good as new. No, better than new. I think I saw a way to improve those tactical programming of the constructs. Oh, and maybe if I add a remote kill switch, that would solve... Oh, for the love of Korash, grumbles Warthon, covering his eyes with the palm of one hand. You adventurers will be the death of me, or of the inn, or one or the other. In the silence that follows, the mysterious bubbling and fizzing noise sounds as if it's both louder and closer. Warthon takes a deep breath to calm himself. Look, I appreciate the offer and all your hard work, I really do, but I really wish you'd ask me before... A uh, wardy, says Kirky, pointing to a distant corner of the room. Don't call me wardy, says Warthon. Now look, it's late, so why don't you lot leave off this training room nonsense for now? Tomorrow morning, we can ask Olivia for some cleaning supplies and then... Sorry to keep interrupting, Thorny, says Gurky, gesturing at the corner again. But I was just wondering, is the floor meant to be doing that? You all turn to look at the corner of the room just in time to watch a large section of the basement floor give way, crashing into darkness with a thundering boom, taking a rack of ale barrels and several dozen broken construct carcasses with it. What in the bleeding heck is all that? mutters Warthone, his face falling. A pack of oozing, multicolored slimes begin undulating over the lip of the huge dark hole and into the basement. They burble and fizzle as they swarm over ale puddles, splintered barrels, and the broken constructs alike. Soon, the back corner of the basement is covered in a shuddering carpet of myriad colors and textures. That's bad, says Deidre. No, that's awesome, says Fiona. I am assuming says Zot, looking from the advancing slime back to the party's two artificers, that this is not part of the Danger Room's protocols. No, says Willie, pulling her goggles back down over her eyes. No, it's not. Right then, we're going to have to force these slimes back into the hole before they eat the Red Dragon in, and then we'll need to go upstairs and get our other equipment. Zot pauses to pat Warthorns reassuringly on the shoulder. Don't worry, my friend. We won't let them destroy your livelihood. Thanks, says Warthorn, looking on in stunned disbelief. Much appreciated. After completing this scenario, we get to unlock the following cards from the vault. New hero cards go to their heroes, and new items are now added to the armory. So we'll be able to use new hero cards. We'll get one new hero for a uh, new hero card for each hero, as well as some items that we can use for our next scenario. And there you have it. That is Scenario 1, Chapter 1. In this uh, chapter, there are four different scenarios, and I believe there are five chapters. Generally, each have four to five scenarios, so there's about 25 in the game. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see another scenario. I love this game. I'd like to show other characters, but I'm also curious if you'd like to see more, or maybe it'd be better not to, uh, and you can explore it on your own. Just want to have a huge call out for everyone for watching. Thank you so much. Your excitement for games keeps Berndt and my excitement for games alive. And thank you to all the patrons. Without you, we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing. If you're excited to see what comes next, then I need you to meet me at the table. Goodbye, everyone. Bye -bye.